How's it going, guys? So a medium difficulty question for pediatrics. Nothing dramatic, nothing outrageous. We'll cut to the chase, not waste our fucking time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now start the clip. Three-year-old boy. He's brought into emergency after a tonic-clonic seizure. Earlier in the evening, he had abdominal pain in three loose bloody stools. He's febrile at 102 Fahrenheit. There's no nuclear rigidity. He has normal hemoglobin, 14.2 grams per deciliter, should be 13 to 17.5 in males and non-menstruating women, 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. Leukocytes elevated, 13,000 per microliter, should be 4 to 11,000 per microliter. Platelets, normal, 250,000 per microliter, should be 150 to 450,000 per microliter. LDH, lactate dehydrogenase within normal limits. And we have a normal blood smear here, okay? So let's just look at the answer choices. Most likely diagnosis. Choice A, hemolytic uremic syndrome, wrong fucking answer. This is going to be a triad of thrombocytopenia, schistocytosis with hemolytic anemia, and renal insufficiency slash hematuria. Clearly, we have platelets with, within the normal range. Uh, we don't have schistocytes on a blood smear, fragmented RBCs, helmet cells, and there's no evidence of renal insufficiency or hematuria. Hemolytic uremic syndrome due to Shiga toxin from Shigella or Shiga-like toxin from E. coli E. hec 0157H7. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, Henoxcholine purpura, wrong answer. Classic tetrad of palpable purpura, violaceous skin lesions on the buttocks, thighs, sometimes on the trunk, arthralgias, abdominal pain, and IJ nephropathy, which is red urine one to two days after a viral infection, sometimes after a GI infection. So we don't have any skin lesions here, and we don't have hematuria. So HSP, wrong fucking answer. Now, this is where the question gets a little bit more challenging. Choice C, idiopathic seizure disorder, wrong answer. Now, this could refer to epilepsy, all right, when a child develops a seizure disorder and it literally is idiopathic, meaning we don't know the cause, okay? E.g., is it genetic? I mean, that's idiopathic, okay? Epilepsy. This child, however, has what's called febrile seizure, and there's a known etiology being it appears he's had some sort of GI infection, okay? So a febrile seizure is when a child has, e.g., a vaccine, viral infection, bacterial infection, is febrile, there's a known etiology, He's feb he or she is febrile, and then there's a seizure. It's a febrile seizure, of course, very worrisome for parents, everyone involved. There's a small increased risk, 2 to 3% of developing epilepsy compared to other children in the population, but that's febrile seizure. There's a known etiology e.g. vaccine, as I just fucking said. It's not idiopathic per se, okay? It's not idiopathic like epilepsy is. So let's just continue walking through the answers here. Choice D, rotavirus, wrong answer, because this is watery diarrhea. And, it, and although rotavirus most common in children under the age of five, classically unvaccinated uh, under the age of two months, uh, two, four, six months is when we get rotavirus vaccine. But rotavirus, watery diarrhea, okay? It's not, it's not bloody. Now, choice E, sugallosis. This is the correct answer. And we got there through elimination, okay? It's not that you see this vignette without any answer choices and you say, yeah, of course it's sugallosis. I mean, it could be uh, salmonella by all means, okay? It's a gram-negative rod, It's and it's causing bloody, bloody stools, okay? So that's how we arrive at the answer. We eliminated to get there, and then we're left with sugallosis. And then some students say, wait, but I thought you just said uh, Shiga toxin shigella can cause HUS. Right, it can, but this clearly is an HUS as we don't have thrombocytopenia, we don't have schistocytes, we don't have renal insufficiency, okay? Now look, this question, not my fucking opinion. I'm not trying to be uh, entertaining or creative here. A very similar cue shows up on one of the offline pediatrics forms. So this is how the US simile assesses shigalosis. I think this is the only question I've seen across all NBME content for steps one and two, where they just strictly give you a presentation of Shigella and want you to choose Shigellosis as the answer. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.